Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Lord, you are worthy of all praise. You're worthy of all praise. Put your hands and raise our voices. For the earth will hear rejoicing. When I'm weary, I will spring up with thanksgiving. I will pour out praise to you in the furnace, in the fire, in the heat of my desire. I will light up like a lantern, I will burn with gratitude. Every breath is a witness of your faithfulness. Your love. Your love and kindness I just can't forget 
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Every Nation Church Premier. We're so glad to have you with us this morning, and thank you for joining us on our online service. I'm sure that you are going to be so blessed with the message today, and let's get our heart ready to worship and praise our Almighty God.
to trust what you say that you're good and your love is great I'm broken inside to life from death into life His grace changes everything from broken to old sing to wider than snow His grace changes everything His grace changes So sing to great, and so pain to deep. The cross declares it is done. There's no shame to real that His love won't heal forever. The victory is won.
Some scripture from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. It says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts and through faith. I love this prayer. That instead of praying for God to take care of our problems, it's much better for God strengthen our inner being so that we are able to overcome any kind of problems and when we have that confidence in us we'll be free from worries and anxieties what an amazing prayer why don't we pray for ourselves along these lines father i open our hearts and ask you to dwell in us and strengthen us through your spirit that christ may dwell in us in faith and that we can grow in confidence in you who you are of your love, your grace, and your mercy for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Every Nation Church Penang. We are here to honor God and make disciples. And don't forget to stay connected and be in fellowship throughout the week. Join our live group sessions online. If you're not part of the live group and would like to know more, please leave us a note so that we can get back in touch with you. Now, this Thursday, don't forget, we are having our worship prayer night at 8.30 p.m. Come and join us as we pray for our nations, pray for our church leaders, and pray for our needs. 
see you there Thursday 8.30. And yes, this week we are launching first time ever live chat with our pastor from 11 to 11.30. Stay back so they can chat with our pastor if you want to get to know more about our church. Also at the same time, 11 to 11.30, you can also get in touch with our prayer team through the live prayer session where you can come and share your prayer needs. Now, I'd like you to pay attention to Wang because I heard she's got a great testimony. Hey, you good, Wang? That's good, Brother Casey. In Galatians 6, 9 said, Let us not become weary while doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I want to share about a member in my LT who is so sacrificial in her giving. Despite holding two jobs, she makes time to listen to lonely aunties and help find work for the unemployed. When her neighbor lost her job and couldn't pay her rent, she offered her own home for free. Wow! Sadly, during MCO, this dear sister lost her income which means she won't be able to pay her rent. But I tell you, her faith was stronger than her worries. Anyway, on Mother's Day, she passed me some offering money for church. And you know what? Amazing things happened two days later. Her landlord came to see her and lower her rent from 750 to 300 for the rest of the year. Wow! Remember the lonely aunties? Well, when they heard her testimony, both of them gave the heart to Jesus. Wow, amazing! Hallelujah! Here is my encouragement for everyone. Keep on doing good no matter what. Be a blessing to many people because God knows our heart. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters that have been so generous in their giving. May they reap a harvest if they do not give up. In Jesus' name, Amen. There are so many ways we can pay our tithes and give our offering. You may write a check to an online transfer or use QR pay. We will give you a couple of minutes to do this before hearing from the pastor. Thank you for your generosity. doesn't fight crime or wear a cape 
He doesn't read minds or levitate. But every time my world needs saving, he's my Superman. Some folks don't believe in heroes, cause they haven't met my dad. He built me a house in the arms of a tree. He taught me to drive and to fight and to dream. When he looks in my eyes, I hope he can see that my dad's a hero to me. Hello there, I'm Pastor GP and I want to welcome all of you to our online service. You know what? I had my hair cut. Now you have just watched two video clips and I want to cheer all those who have taken effort okay, to put the Power Love Sound My initiative to action. Okay, can we give them a big hand? Yes. Now this Power Love Sound My initiative is a way to demonstrate God's goodness okay, in the all season of life. So I want to encourage all of you to continue to put God's love okay, into action. Can okay, I a good amen? Now, secondly, last weekend, we had our Father's Day online celebration and we had the Working Adult Zone to present the uh, short video production. I hope you are blessed and I want you to give them a big hand as well. Now, uh, I've asked the fathers okay, to dress up, suit up, okay, to take a family photo. So, I want to thank all of you who have taken the effort to do so and that's where you watch the video clip just now. Now, we have given away more than 70 gifts to fathers and were delivered okay, to their doorsteps. I want to thank April and team for planning that. Now, the gift comes with a tagline okay, that says, Spread love as thick as you would peanut butter. Now, to the mothers, okay, I want to say this, we want to cheer you as well because father cannot be a father without you. So the best thing a father can do is to love the mother of his children. Can I good amen? Yes. Now, today, we're going to continue our series entitled Unwavering Faith, and it is part three. Now, Brother AJ is going to take the word. Uh, let me say that AJ okay, works for the, uh, as a teacher for the one of the international schools in Penang. Now, Brother AJ also part of the worship team, and leads the Tanjong Bunga Life Group. So if you live up around that part of the island, please join Tanjong Bunga Life Group. Now, let's put our hands together and let's welcome Brother AJ. Welcome to Every Nation Church, Penang. We exist to honor God and make disciples. This week, we will be continuing our journey in unwavering faith, the faith journey of Abraham. In week one, we tackled about unwavering relationship. In week two, unwavering word. And for this week, we will be talking about unwavering purpose. What is the unwavering purpose of Abraham? What is the unwavering purpose of our lives? And it can be found in Genesis chapter 13. Let us pray. Let's commit this time to the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord. And we ask and pray, Lord, Open our hearts and our minds. Lord. Teach us like Abraham. And Lord, as we, end, as we go through this day, Lord, we ask and pray Lord, that your Holy Spirit give us understanding Lord, on what is your unwavering purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. We commit this time. Amen. So what is the objective of this uh, series? We will know that we have an unwavering God. We will know, we will understand that God has an unwavering purpose. And we need to have unwavering faith, just like Abraham. So what is unwavering? According to the dictionary, unwavering is firm, unshakable, steady, and focused. Do you have it? So let's go to the backstory of the things that happened in chapter 12 of uh, Genesis. You will see there that Abraham was the son of Terah from the Ur of the Chaldeans. 
Abraham's wife was Sarai, and he has a nephew named Lot. And on their journey to Canaan, they settled in Haran. Then Terah died at the age of 205. God instructed Abraham to go to the promised land to make him a great nation, bless him, and make his name great. And Abraham obeyed. The Lord took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all of their possessions from Haran to the land of Canaan, built his first altar at the oak of Moray, and the second at the east of Bethel. But there was a famine in the land, so he went to Egypt, instructed Sarah, his wife, to tell the Egyptians that she has, that she is her sister, so they will not kill him and let them live. Sarah was taken to Pharaoh's house. In return, Abraham was given livestock and servants. But the Lord afflicted Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. And thus Abraham was sent away and all he has. Church, sometimes we make decisions in our lives. If you will see in chapter 12 there, Abraham just went to Egypt without consulting the Lord. And you will see there he made decisions without consulting God. It is not your purpose to get rich. It is not your purpose to get the best degree in the world. It is not your purpose to have all the wealth in this world, to, all ha to have everything in this world. Your purpose. What is Abraham's purpose? That is what we're going to see today. What is Abraham's purpose? What is your purpose in life? You will see in, in uh, the first purpose of Abraham was believe in God. Romans 4, 3 says, What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. The word believe is very strong. And you will see there that the first characteristics or the first purpose of Abraham is to believe God. The second purpose is obey God. By faith, in, in Hebrews 11, 8, you will see there, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Obey. Obedience. My dad would always say, say in his preaching, delayed obedience is still disobedience. Incomplete obedience is still disobedience. And what Abraham did here is that he obeyed when he was instructed by the Lord. In James 2, 21-23 says, Was Abraham our father justified by works when he was offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, his faith was made perfect. Church, you will see in verse 22 very clearly that faith works hand in hand with works. And as Abraham was obediently obeying the Lord, his faith is being perfected. You will see in Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good worship, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Because you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it is automatically the result of your faith is good works. And true faith in our Lord Jesus Christ results to good works. And one of them is obedience. Now the question is, is your purpose unwavering or wavering? 
It's time for you to reflect. Is my purpose, is my purpose of faith and obedience to God unwavering or wavering? So if it is wavering, that is what God will teach you today. Point one, reflect on your journey. You will see in Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 4. So in verse 1, so Abraham went out of Egypt and he and his wife with, and all that he had and with Lot into Negev. In verse 3, you will see, he journeyed from Negev as far as Bethel to the place where he where his tent has been at the beginning between Bethel and I. At the beginning, he reflected, he went back to his beginning. And in verse 4, to the place where he had made an altar at the first. And there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. Church, you will see here, Abraham went back to the beginning. At first, and there what he did, called upon the name of the Lord. Is your, the question is, if, if in Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 says, Nevertheless, I have a, this against you, for you have left your first love. God is asking you today, reflect, is God still your first love? Is he your priority? Is he the reason why you are working? Is he the reason why you are living? And God is telling you, is he still your first love? Or are you already so overwhelmed with your work, overwhelmed to get rich, overwhelmed to get that best new car, overwhelmed to get that house, that dream house that you've been praying for all this time? And you're focusing on those things. God is asking you, is he still your first love? So, if you think you have forsaken your first love, God is telling you, go back to the beginning. Find again the joy of your salvation. Remember the time that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. In point number two, consult God in every decision that you make. You will see in Genesis chapter 13 verse 4, to the place where he had made an altar at the first, and there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. He consulted God. Are you consulting God in your lives? How's your devotional life? How's your, how's your prayer life? Do you have that special altar where you could commune with God every day? Or are we just consulting Him when we are doing the biggest decisions in life? And when, when, when you have small decisions in life, you just, okay, God, I don't need you on this. God is telling us, consult God in everything that you do, that you are doing. Big decisions, small decisions, it's still a decision. And God is telling you, consult God. You will see here, let's compare and contrast, okay? In Genesis chapter 13, 10 and 11, they were having conflicts already, okay? And, and there are times that our lives are filled with conflicts and, and we need to make a decision. And then in this season, okay, their servants are already fighting for each other. Where is the better pasture? Where uh, is, this my, is this our flock or not? Okay, they are already arguing because their wealth is so vast. And so he was given, uh, Abraham was giving Lot the choice. Let's have, let, we need to part our ways for us to grow. 
And you will see here that Lot lifted his eyes and saw the valley of Jordan. Well watered everywhere like God, the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt. And you will see here in verse 11, Lot chose for himself. Most of the time, we are not consulting God. You are choosing for yourselves. You will see here in the other verse, Abraham consulted, called upon the name of the Lord. He consulted the Lord. And then when that, uh, that uh, moment came that there was a problem, he is ready. He has the Lord's wisdom. And he asked Lot, do the first decision. And you will see here that Lot chose for himself. And you will see also that he never learned what happened in Egypt. He was there with Abraham. Never learned. He made the same decision that Abraham did in, verse, in chapter 12. Church, are we doing that same decision? Are we making decisions for ourselves? And God is telling us, time for you to consult God. Consult Him in the smallest decisions, even in the biggest decisions. Train yourselves consulting God in every decision that you are doing. You know what happened? Because of what Lot did in, in, in the succeeding chapters, you will see that he was raided by, by other nations. He was taken captive and brought to Sodom. Sodom was, was annihilated by the Lord. Okay? He lost her wife and, and, her, and his children okay, had an incestuous relationship with him by making him drunk. That one decision caused a generation of consequences. Because he made a decision without consulting God. And you will see also what happened to Abraham. He consulted God and he reaped the grace that generations is having. So the choice is yours. Would you like a generational blessing or a generational curse? Because you choose for yourself and not consulting God. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you will see, Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He shall direct your path. You will see there, lean not on your own understanding. God is telling us today, lean on the wisdom, the knowledge of God in your lives. Not on your own wisdom. Because He is the creator of this world. He knows everything. He knows what is best for you and me. Point number three, God is telling us, worship God. As you will read the whole chapter of 13, Genesis chapter 13, in, in 13 verse 4, you, you will see, To the place where he had made an altar, there Abraham called upon the name of the Lord. The altar that he built is where he worships. And you will see also in verse 18, in the last verses of chapter 13, so Abraham moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar for the Lord. 
in worship. Right before that he came back from Egypt, what he did again was worship. And, 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 and as he received God's blessing, he worshiped. Sometimes what, what, what is happening to us is that we are worshiping Him when we are asking something. And when we receive that blessing, we fail to worship God already. And there are times we are worshiping ourselves, how good we are because we got that better job, because we got that better car, how good we are. And we stop worshiping God. We, are, we start worshiping ourselves. And God is telling us, you have to worship God continually. Worship Him in the beginning. Worship Him at the end. Jesus says in Luke chapter 4 verse 8, And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Abraham understood the whole purpose of his life. He reflected. He consulted God. And he worshipped God continually. For him to be always in the center of his purpose. And that is faith and obedience. That is what God is teaching us today. So what is the result? Abraham received God's in Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 18, you will see here that the Lord said to Abraham after Lot had separated from him, Lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are. Northward, southward, eastward, and westward. It's like you have an app that is 360 degrees. He's giving him the 360 degrees view of Canaan. The promised land. For all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. And I will make you make your offering offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring can also be counted. Arise, walk through the length of your breath of the land, for I will give it to you. Wow. Being a father of the nations, you know that it's not, it's, it's, it's just superficial. But what Abraham understood is that his purpose is to have faith in him, to believe God, and, and to obey him. When he understood that concept, everything all of God's blessings come to him and to his generations. And it extends until today to us now. That is what God can do. Once you understand his faith, your purpose, which is faith and obedience. Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. In verse 12, Call on me. Come and pray with me. I will listen to you. Seek me. Find me. Seek me with all your heart. And God is telling us today, Trust your lives completely. So what is our unwavering purpose? God wants His children to believe and obey. Remember these two words, believe and obey. That is what God taught Abraham. That is His purpose. And that is our purpose as a believer of Jesus Christ. We need to continually believe The challenge today is that, are you ready? Are you ready? Let us pray. 
if this is your first time hearing this beautiful message and you want to start your faith journey with God, come follow this prayer. Jesus, I admit as a sinner, I admit, Lord, that I cannot save myself. Starting today, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world. I believe that you are the only one who can save. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And be with me forever. In Jesus' name. Church, if you made that prayer, today is the start of your faith journey. And if you are someone that, that you are lost right now and you want to come back to your first one, God is asking you today to surrender everything to Him. Surrender your future to Him. Surrender your life to Him. And He will give you the best things of your life. And as we end today, I just want to pray for you all. Lord, as we end today's worship, I know that I have some brothers and sisters here right now Lord, that are listening. And I pray, Lord God, that their purpose in life Lord, will be clear starting today. I pray, Lord God, that, that their purpose of believing you, Lord God, their obedience to you, Lord God, will be unwavering like Abraham. And I pray, Lord God, that you bless each one of us today, Lord, to have an unwavering faith, an, an unwavering obedience to you, Lord God. Bless us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. We humbly bow down before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. AJ for the amazing word. If you are so blessed with the message today and you have a praying request, share that with us and your life group members. If you don't belong to any yet, no worries, drop us a message and we will help you get connected. And kids, don't go anywhere. The kids service is going to start really soon. Finally, thank you once again for tuning in and have a blessed Sunday. See you next week. Bye.